everyone and welcome to Curly and Yarny. I am Milena and in today's video I will be warping for kitchen towels and this time I will be doubling the yarn with a technique I haven't shown you on this channel yet so let's start this. So before uh, jumping into today's video, I wanted to tell you about something that is coming up very soon for my channel. So I will be uh, doing my first YouTube live video uh, in two weeks or maybe even a week and a half from now. And uh, so there's something that I've been meaning to do for a while and I finally set myself on a date. So uh, that will be on the February the 12th. So this is a Saturday and this will happen at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so at uh, the same time zone as in Montreal and New York. At first I wanted to do it on the 13th, but uh, my boyfriend told me it's Super Bowl and I don't think I can compete with Super Bowl, so it's gonna be on Saturday the 12th. So it's very close to the va it's Valentine's Day, so uh, this could also be our Valentine's Day date <laughs> together. So uh, during this live YouTube video, uh, I uh, want to chat with you. I want to have a I want to have a discussion with you. So uh, please let me know if you have questions that you would like me to answer during this uh, live YouTube video. Uh, also, if uh, you cannot join me on that day and there's still questions you would like to uh, have answered, uh, please just ask me the questions in the comments down below. And I'll try to see if uh, I can fit them during the video. Um, and the video will be uh, afterwards available on my channel. So if you miss the date, you could still watch it later on. So February the 12th at 2 p.m. It is a rendezvous, so it is a date <laughs> with all of you guys. So I'm very, very excited. I hope to uh, be able to meet a lot of you guys on, the, on that day. And so now, uh, without further ado, let's start the project. So and now let's talk about the project and the specific of this project. So I am weaving a uh, dish towels. So I uh, warp for 2.5 meters and uh, in the hope of weaving two dish towels that will each be around one meter or if you prefer 40 inches. I warp for a width of 24 inches in total and I'm using a two cotton. For this project I use four different colors. So I have used a lot of the natural yarn and I also used some green and the name of this green is in French is sapin uh, which means a uh, fir tree so it's like Christmas tree so it is a green that is uh, not so vibrant it's, a, it's, it's kind of a light green I really really like it. I have also used some uh, purple and the name of this one is plum and I have used some and so those are the four colors I use for the towel. So let's talk a little bit about how I came up with uh, the idea for this pattern. So at first I really wanted to show you this technique and I thought I would be doing it with only two colors. So I thought I would use natural and plum. But when I went into my stash and grabbed the plum, my hands just reached those two other colors and I was like wow those just looks amazing together so I decided to change my plan and actually use all of those colors in my towel. Uh, so I don't have any preference for any of those colors so I've decided to divide my towel into three sections so each section will have one of the color and of course each section will have some natural. I am also using my 10 dpi heddle but just note that this pattern would also be possible if uh, you wanted to use a 12.5 dpi heddle and the same technique I'm going to show you for the warping would apply as well. The reason why I am doubling the yarn in uh, the warp is because I am using a 10 dpi heddle and if I uh, were to uh, single the threads uh, with my 8 to cut in, I would have, I would end up with a towel that would be too thin to my taste. So this is why I am doubling the warp threads. So a doubling the threads in the warp is something that is often done when weaving on a rigid little loom. So uh, I wanted to show you an alternative of what I've already shown you. Uh, so something else that you could do when you want to achieve this result. So in the past I have shown you another technique where I was doubling the yarn uh, for the warp while warping and in this method what I was doing I was pulling one loop out of each dent of my heddle. So uh, in a heddle we call dent either the slot and the hole so when I was warping I was pulling a loop out of each slot and then out of each 
holes. Today I'm going to do it differently so the way I'm going to do it today will be much more similar to uh, the normal warping if you'd like because I'm only going to pull loops out of the slots but I'm going to double them as I will be using two bobbins at the same time. And a little particularity with uh, today's method is that uh, I am, as I said, pulling loops out of two different bobbins. They could be, they could have been the same color, so that would have worked. But I decided to uh, chose two different colors because I wanted to have some fun effect in it. So you will see when we uh, will get to the weaving point that this allows for some very interesting uh, pattern. Uh, so this is why I chose to do it this way. Also note that today's video is really only about the warping uh, so next week's video will be about the weaving uh, so stay tuned for that. So as you can see uh, the loom is already warped so uh, what I'm going to do I'm simply going to go uh, back in time and show you how I did it and after that I will be back with you to explain to you the differences and maybe the advantages and disadvantages of both warping method that I have showed you. So first I'm going to uh, label my heddle to help me with the color changing in the warping. So I have some pieces of scrap yarn so I will need about four to uh, label my heddle. So those are kind of short but it's gonna work. <laughs> so what I do, I have my measuring tape here so I try to measure 24 inches and I want to uh, center it with my heddle as much as possible. So here I have the the, uh, if I separate, if I divide 24 by 2, it means 12. So 12 should be the middle of the towel, and this is pretty much the middle of the heddle, I think. So here I have a Ashford loom, so I have an Ashford heddle. So they say Ashford, and when you have a little point, I believe this is very close to the middle. So I try to get those two in line, and here I will put my scrap yarn in the slot to label the beginning and the end of the towel. One, and here 24, so I will put in the second scrap yard. Now my pattern will be divided into uh, three parts so uh, I've divided the whole thing into three so what I want to do is label when I will need to change colors because there's so many colors here and so for so long the same color I find it easier to simply mark it under the head instead of counting and if I make a mistake and it's one more one less it doesn't really show when it's uh, on this kind of project I feel like so again 24 can be divided by 3 so it means 8 inches so each section will be 8 so here then here again 8 so I will tie it up here now we have the halo label so we have 8 inches here 8 inches here and another 8 inches here so they are pretty much equal so we can set the place to start the warping so we are going to start with the green and the natural so I'm putting them close by each other and the first thing I'm going to do is tie both yarn to my back apron. And now I am going to pull both yarn through the slot like I would do with any other yarn if it was only one. So I know that my first slot is here according to uh, the um, scrap yarn I put to label it. So now I have a loop and this loop is made of the two yarn and I just pull it and I'm gonna go and put it on my uh, ladder. So yay, one loop done! <laughs> so now I'm going to grab the yarn like I would do normally. So now I need to go under the apron and I go through the next slot. I take the yarn and I pull.
Alright, so now I have done a whole section of natural and green, so the next section will be made with the purple, which is named plum. So I will need to change colors, so I'm going to cut the green yarn and attach it. But I'm going to keep the natural yarn because um, this is the yarn that I'm using all the way through the towel. So this one stays here, this one's getting cut. Chop, chop. I make a little nut. And now I'm going to attach this one to the loom. So now the purple is attached and I just need to grab on the natural and make sure that it follows its original path. So uh, otherwise, uh, I, I sometimes have just a reflex to keep the, take this yarn, take this one and go. But if I were to do that, the natural yarn would have not gone around the apron, so it would have not been securely attached. And this is what happens sometimes when you see that you've missed the apron, the yarn just kind of uh, grabs onto the heddle only and you don't really want that. It's courageable, but <laughs> let's try not to make mistakes. So I take the two yarn and I go in the next slot, which is here. And I pull and I'm going to put that all the way through the room. So now it's time to uh, do the threading. So uh, there are different things we can uh, do with this to play uh, with the pattern. Oh, I just want to jump in here and just mention that as you know, when we pull one loop into a slot, that creates two threads. As I was pulling two loops in this process, I have now four threads. So uh, let's see what I decided to do with those four threads. So I want to keep it quite simple today. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, leave the uh, natural yarn in the slot and put the two threads of color in the holes and I'm going to do this all the way through the heddle. I could have done a lot of things as I said, so I could have uh, mixed things up and put one natural and one color in the slot and one color and one natural in the holes. I could have uh, did a color in the holes for an inch, then color in the slots for an inch and so on and, and change that. So there's many many things that could be done but today we're gonna keep this simple. So after uh, the first method, the one in which I was pulling a loop out of each den, I ended up with a threaded heddle just like that magically. I didn't have to uh, go back to it and thread the heddle. It was already ready to be attached. After I had winded the warp onto the back beam, it was already ready to be attached and start weaving. 
With today's method, it did not happen this way since I was simply pulling the yarn out of the slot. I did have to do the threading. So I think it comes down to what you prefer or hate the most <laughs> doing while warping. And so in the first because in the uh, first method you skip the threading part but you have to walk back in front the room back in front in the room a lot more as with the method i showed you today you don't have to uh, walk back and front back and forth as much in the room but you do have to do some threading uh, before being able to start the weaving and so personally it depends on the day there are some days i just feel like exercising so i feel like walking <laughs> back and forth the room many many times but there are other days that i'm thinking well i'd rather just be seated and uh, do the threading instead for a little longer so this is really all up to you and what you prefer so this is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it so and now we have a loom that is all well warped so and uh, next week i'm going to weave with it and i'm going to show you uh all of what this um, pattern has to offer so i'm going to have fun with this have fun with the little stripes and i hope you'll join me next week to see this and don't forget to put the 12th of february on the calendar when we will have our live chat discussion together so i uh, see you soon bye bye